What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. Now with the summer just around the corner, I thought that this was no better time than to give you another Entitled Parents movie. You know, it's almost June. The weather's getting lovely. Everyone wants to go outside, chill, you know, soak in the summer sun. So here we go. This is it. R slash Entitled Parents, the movie summer edition my entitled parents won't close the bathroom door when they're taking a poop or a pee the title basically sums it up my parents will regularly not close the door while using the bathroom most of the time their excuse is i didn't know it was open but i know that's complete bs and i know it's because they're actually just being lazy my dad's excuse is that his lung condition he has pulmonary fibrosis prevents him from closing the bathroom door because he's out of breath he uses this condition for legitimately everything we ask him to do, including leaving all of his clothing in the bathroom when he bathes for me and my mum to pick up. He regularly puts on a show when he doesn't want to do something and will all of a sudden be completely out of breath. And then the second we leave the room, he is fine. He's got absolutely no perceptual awareness so he can literally pretend to leave the room and he won't notice myself or my mum still standing there when his condition suddenly resolves itself in seconds. I know that sounds heartless, but my dad has emotionally abused me and my mum for my entire life. I've got almost no sympathy for him as he'd regularly pretend or exaggerate conditions throughout my life to get out of things. He's unmedicated bipolar and loves when he gets attention from his ailments. His pulmonary fibrosis is legit, but it's very obvious when he exaggerates it and my entire family notices. Now for my mum, her excuse is that she just doesn't know it's open or forgets. My bathroom is very small though, and when you sit on the toilet, you'd have to be staring at the wall to your right the entire time to not see the door. She just does it because she's lazy. But my mum's got a complex that whenever she's challenged on anything, she takes it extremely personally and will do anything and say any excuse to resist what was asked of her. When I've asked her to please close the door, she usually responds, this is my house, so I'll do what I want and call me a butthole or whatever adjective she's feeling. This answer doesn't mean much anymore because my name is officially on the deed to the house due to my dad's condition. So it's also very much my house. Now, my fiance regularly comes by the house, but that doesn't stop them from pooping out in the open. My house is small and there's only one bathroom, so she's seen them several times. It's embarrassing, and I've asked them both to please have at least a little respect. My mum has completely blown up at me over the issue, and she slammed her bedroom door in my face before. Her slamming the door at least proves she's capable of closing doors. Ah, oh, that got me. My dad will default to using his condition as to why, and I'm just beating up on an old sick man according to him. I don't get it. I'm going to be moving out soon as my fiance is finishing up school and we're looking for a house in the fall. But this has been going on for most of my life and it's embarrassing. I hope my story at least brought you some humor because this has certainly made my life a joke. Yeah, it sounds like you can't get out of there fast enough. That is ridiculous. I mean, that is one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. People giving excuses for not closing a door. I thought I'd seen it all. Apparently not. It's also just like downright disgusting. I'm sorry. You're just pooping out in the open. That's what it is right i don't want to go too graphic but poo particles are going across the house and also the fact that you just walk past the bathroom look in and oh there's a dad just what a sight to behold weird people let's move on customer thinks it's okay to buy fish knowing they're going to die so i work in a pet store I have my fair share of dumb people, but this encounter is the only one that's actually made my blood boil. I'm over in the fish area when a mother and her son come over to me. She tells me they need help with fish, so I ask them what they're thinking, which prompts the father to wander over. He shows me the five gallon tank they've already got in a cart. I'm already cringing, call it a gut feeling. He points at the goldfish and says they'd like three small ones. So I go on to my usual script of, well, these get really big. You're gonna need a 75 gallon tank, not a five gallon tank for three, yada yada. At this point, they're already looking pretty annoyed and I'm getting a bad vibe alert. The dad motions towards the feeder goldfish and asks if they could get some of those then. And I give him the same answer. He also mentions that they're going to need a sucker fish. This is also known as a common pleco. I hate when people call them this. It just proves to me that A, they don't actually know what they are and B, they have no idea what they're getting into. I go into my usual spiel of how big plecos get as well. 
And it's then the mother steps in with, well, we can upgrade when they get older. This is code for, we won't actually, but we're saying we will so that you'll give us the fish, by the way. Nine out of ten times. Unless someone can tell me exactly what tank specifications a certain fish is going to need as they get older without any prompting from me, I call bull. So instead, I try to encourage them away from the bigger fish and towards smaller options. Mollies, platies, etc. I encourage them to get no more than two or three. The guy finally settles on two platies and two guppies, to which I state, a little bit more forcefully, since apparently they needed it, that I would not recommend more than three. He kind of stands there for a second, then looks at me and says, well, they're probably not going to live much longer than a month anyway. Now, I know that due to past experiences, a lot of people think that fish don't live super long, which obviously isn't true. So I ask him, why is that? He says... Well, I've got three kids, so they're going to be putting rubbish in the tank all the time. To which I replied, with what hopefully came out as a mixture of rage and horror, then why are you getting them? The mother piped up behind me with, because we can. Aha, now you can't. So I told them that I didn't feel comfortable selling any fish of them and they marched out leaving their full car of random fish stuff for me to put away. I thought that was the end of it, joking around with my co-worker as we bonded over the stupidity of people. However, my manager mentioned later that she'd gotten a complaint call about me, and I just started laughing, LMFAO. Apparently, she called my manager and left a complaint, telling her that I wouldn't allow them to get any fish besides guppies and that I was horribly rude. She neglected to tell my manager the size of the tank that they had or how rudely they treated the idea of living sentient beings. Luckily, my manager was understanding, but god dang, the audacity. All right, let me just get these straight. These guys, these parents are willing to buy these fish knowing that they're going to die within a month because their kids are going to be putting stuff in the tank. Like what? Like do they not realize that fish are friends, not food? And also they got feelings like in all seriousness like come on it's a fish they're just gonna murder fish and they're gonna be okay with it i don't know why they think that fish are any different to other pets like you wouldn't buy a cat or a dog and then say oh it's gonna die in a month because my kids are gonna play with it and like you know throw stuff at it whatever like it's just a very very strange thing they think fish are just throw away things wow that is actually disgusting yeah by the way fair play to you op for not going through with this i reckon people with a, a little bit less of a backbone than you would have just said now that they've gone out of my store i don't care about them anymore but uh yeah fair play to you for saying Saying, you know what i'm not comfortable here good stuff not giving these entitled people what they want the problem is though they're almost definitely just going to go to another store and then get them really strange and really sad let's carry on now for our third story crazy liar dad finds out where i live and attempts to give my apartment to his random friends without my knowledge To add some context, I am a 25-year-old woman. Now, my parents are so crazy to the point which me and the majority of my family had to cut them off. For me, it was my dad completely and my mum only calls on occasion. My mum also tries to overstep, such as inviting my dad to family events that he's specifically not invited to. The reason is he tries to steer every conversation and attempts to talk about himself. People usually don't care or want to hear what he's saying. Then he argues with them and threatens their lives. And my mum purposely does these things, knowing they'll cause an argument, and she gets joy out of it. So, needless to say, same people don't want these issues in their lives. My dad is delusional and narcissistic, to the point where he thinks he's famous and claims everyone runs up to him for pictures. He then doubles down, saying he's famous and that someone he knows is making a movie about him. He lies about it all, obviously, because no one's ever seen this, and it's a running joke. People laugh at him. He thinks it's with him though, not at him. He's lost all of his friends due to his poor behavior, such as arguments, belittling, non-stop phone calls, and more. But to the story, the story of his lies and delusions. I have an apartment and I haven't given him my address because we aren't on speaking terms. And he's threatened my life because I wouldn't give him my personal info so he could take out loans in my name. Like that's an obvious no. Also, I didn't actually grow up with him, so I barely know him. He's apparently told people that he has an apartment, which is actually mine, that he lets his daughter, me, live in. This is what I've been told. He likes to pretend that he's the big shot. So I guess he told some people who needed a place to live that they could stay at his spare apartment. He got my address from a family member. I assume my mum, due to the fact that no one I know actually speaks to him. One day, I get a call from my apartment building manager saying there are some people at the gates saying that they're here to move in. 
is that correct? I was just as confused as she seemed, as well as the people he sent to live at my place. He somehow thinks it's his place. Mind you, it is my place. I pay the bills and I didn't even know that he knew my address. I go out and meet these said guests as there was so much confusion. These three people, three random, sketchy, older looking men. On a side note, I would at most let a friend stay a few nights if needed, but not random, strange men. I ask what's going on. My building manager stayed because she wanted to know what was going on and wanted to help sort it out. She also needed to know who was moving in and out because she's in charge of leasing and the building isn't that big. We all know each other. The three men proceed to tell me they're moving into my place, that they're here for the keys. You're his daughter, right? He said you'd be out by the time we got here and the keys would be at the front desk. We all looked and I said, do you see a front desk? I asked to see what the address was. We thought maybe it was the wrong address. Nope, it was my address. So the guy said that your dad said he kicked you out because he said you're freeloading and he had you leave the keys at the non-existent front desk. By this time, all five of us were confused, but they had my address. I said to them, look, my dad doesn't even have my address, so I've got no idea how he got it. But by this time, they're trying to call him and sort it out and he's not even answering. I explained to them, I don't know how you or he got this address. I haven't spoken to him in about a year and I'm not sure about how I'm freeloading or what he's told you. But look, this is my place. I don't know what's going on. You've got to figure it out with him, but I've got no place for you. Sorry. They then tried to get me to call him, but I said no. Calling won't change anything and this isn't my problem. So I can't help you guys. By the way, they didn't actually seem threatening. It was just random and weird for all of us. I hear one guy on the phone talking to my dad and I can hear him telling him that I'm lying, etc. Asking me to show him the lease. At this point, me, the guys and the building manager all just look confused. They look embarrassed. But my manager stepped in at this time, luckily. She told the men that you all must have the wrong place and that I am the only one on the lease. You'll have to leave and sort it out. I can say, despite them looking sketchy initially, they were as calm as they could be in their odd situation. Because in all honesty, the only fault they had was believing my dad. They thought they were moving into an apartment for free. If I was in that situation, I wouldn't be happy either. After apologizing and before leaving, I heard one of them say, I knew something was up. He always lies. So I asked him, what did he say? One of the men said that he told him that he had a spot for him to move in, all furnished and paid up for the rest of the year. My dad supposedly had said, I kicked my daughter out because she's freeloading. But then he claimed that he couldn't get out of the lease. I said something like, well, like your friend said, he's a liar. I don't know how, why or what made him do this. I never gave him my address. He isn't on the lease. I don't even talk to him. So look guys, I'm sorry, but I hope it works out. I don't know what my dad thought would happen, but like I said, he's delusional and he actually probably assumed that everything he said was true. Or maybe he assumed there was a front desk and whoever was at the front desk would just magically let three random people in and I'd have no say. I don't know. It's all so crazy that I can't even attempt to understand it. There is no use. I told my manager thanks. And if anyone ever comes when I'm not home, please give me a call or call 911. If I've got a guest coming, I'll be home to greet them. Yeah, the fact that your dad actually believes that it is his apartment when it's just obvious that it's not like it's not even up for debate, right? You bought it, you own it, you rent it, whatever. You're the only name on the lease. He's not even involved and he shouldn't even know where it is. Yeah, I think that just proves that he does have some mental issues going on there. And uh, definitely stay away. Wow. Sending three random people over to his, well, your flat to live in for free. Yeah, there's some issues there for sure. I actually do feel quite bad for these three men because they were probably like, wow, you know, a free place for us to go and live. I'm not going to turn that down. Yeah, obviously sounds a little bit fishy and too good to be true, but you know, might as well go and try it. So it's not really their fault that they went along and had this weird, confusing experience with you. It's not your fault, obviously, that your weird dad sent them there. It's just terrible for everyone apart from your dad who gets away like free he doesn't like who cares he's not losing anything by this he's just confusing and annoying a lot of people he has some issues leave him alone i would say entitled mum wanted me to take off my bra my fiance and i were at a wendy's eating our lunch and the whole time we sat there i kept feeling this woman and her 13 maybe 15 year old son staring at us with this look of disgust now me and my fiance are both trans women so we're used to it 
We just got up and sat somewhere else out of view Not even five minutes later She walks over to where we are and taps my shoulder before the next part I was wearing a loose fitted hoodie and sometimes the shoulders would droop and show my bra strap Anyway, I look at her and she's not with her son Excuse me. She says loud as anything. Yes. Is there something you need? Yes, you're making my son extremely uncomfortable How so? I haven't spoken to your son at all Well, sir, we can see your bra It's disgusting and you need to take it off At this moment, I'm trying not to punch her I'm not doing that I've got C-cups, mum If your son is such an issue, then he needs to stop staring All right, you asked for this She then walked to the counter and demanded to see a manager In about five minutes, the manager brings her back over to us and we all tell our side of the story. Of course, she's demanding that he kick us out because we're disturbing my poor baby boy. Not even kidding. After we tell our stories, she admits she told me I need to remove my bra. And he just says, I'll give you two choices. You can either mind your business or you can leave. Your choice. Next thing you know, she's dragging her baby boy out by his wrist. I really hope that kid's okay, even though he is the butthole that sent mummy over to harass me. Well, to be honest with you guys, I highly doubt it was the kid that sent his mum over. I'm pretty sure the mum just went off her own accord. Clearly, she wanted to do this. She was very incensed. I don't know for what reason, but she clearly was. And yeah, I wouldn't even put one single bit of blame on the son. There's nothing to suggest in this whole story that he even cared one iota. As for this mum, I agree completely with the manager. Mind your own business or get out. Who cares what other people are wearing or doing with their lives? Screw you leave my father won't let me shut my bedroom door at night. I'm 19 19 freaking 19 We live in a two-bedroom house and there are five of us my parents my little 14 year old brother and my grandmother My brother and I share a room separate beds My parents sleep on the couch come bed in the hall and my grandmother has her own room So there's absolutely no privacy throughout the day. I don't get a single moment where no one is around or invading my space. My mother is constantly yelling, shouting at my brother mostly, but it bothers me so much because it happens every day and it affects my peace of mind. It gives me a bad trip back to my childhood, but my parents used to do the same to me. My grandmother always sits in the living room where she puts the TV blaring at full volume. I had my college semester end exams going on online due to the pandemic, and so I was in the living room because my mother wanted to use my room to nap i requested my grandmother turn off the tv for an hour and a half while i finished my exam she agreed but kept talking to me while i was giving my exam to ask how much more time and if she could turn the tv on and put it on mute so nighttime is the only time i get peace But of course, my father takes that away too, being the piece of trash that he is. There are two bathrooms in the house. One in my room, which four of us use, and the other one near my grandmother's room, which she uses. I understand he has to come in to use the washroom at night, and so I don't lock my bedroom door. I just shut it. But he gets mad because I'm not allowed to use my cell phone past 11, so he makes me keep the door open so he could check if I'm still on my phone. He says if the door was closed, I could just turn my phone off if I heard him opening it. This is a phone I pay for by myself, by the way. Yes, I, a goddamn adult, have a freaking screen limit. Ugh, I'm so angry, frustrated, and I just want to scream. I'm freaking suffocating to death here. We're okay economically. My father has a bigger house 20 minutes away. He just chooses to live in a smaller one because he wants to be closer to his older sister so that she can look after grandmother when we're away. I don't really care about this, but you'd think he'd at least let us breathe every so often and get some privacy knowing this but no obviously for cultural context we're south asian i don't know if that was necessary to add but yeah to those saying i should move out i do work part-time it pays enough to be able to afford to pay phone bills and groceries but i can't afford even a quarter of the rent that's the economy here before you have a master's you don't earn enough to be able to rent out imagine usa's hourly minimum wage That's our monthly earning as a student working part-time. And the rent is the same as a studio apartment in Los Angeles in the state I live in. That's the best way I can explain it. Oh my word, OP, I'm so sorry to hear the situation that you're in and have been for your life. I mean, like, what can I even say to that, guys, other than just, that's terrible? I'm sorry. If you got any good advice for OP as to what she could possibly do, get in the comments down below and let her know. Because personally, I'm struggling to even suggest anything here. Like, you're a 19-year-old and you're at university and your life is still being controlled. What do you do, man? It's terrible. Now, moving on to our third entitled parent story. 
Entitled mother demands I remove my knee brace so her daughter can have a fair fight. I am a martial artist and I've been training in my specific discipline for almost 12 years now. In my region, we have a group that organizes events between dojos and cities. The most popular are tournaments. Before COVID, we used to have almost monthly tournaments in different cities. They weren't mandatory, but a lot of people still came because almost everyone is a good sport. Notice how I said almost everyone. Since tournaments have started up again, with a lot of restrictions for health reasons, my dojo has been pretty happy. Those of us who can go take time to commute. The last tournament I was at was a day ago, and we were in a city that was about a two hour drive away from my hometown. Everything was going smoothly until I went into the changing room to change into my G, karate uniform. There was a mother there with her daughter who looked around my age. Why the mum was there was beyond me, but I didn't pay them any mind and went to a corner to change. I had half of my uniform on during the drive there, but I still needed to put my top on and my knee brace. When I was rolling up my pants to pull it on, the mother gave me this nasty look. She quickly pulled her daughter out of the locker room. Just before I pulled on my belt, my senior instructor told me I needed to see the head black belts immediately. Now here is where it gets interesting. Is everything all right, I say? This woman and her daughter say that you have illegal gear. Could we please see it? I am baffled at this point. Uh, Of course, I left my gear bag in the changing room though. I can run and grab it if you want. Oh no, you don't, interrupted the entitled mum. Everyone in the small group turning to her. She put the gear on while my daughter and I were in the changing room. My instructor then says, Are you sure it was OP? I've been training her for years. She bought all her gear at my dojo and we don't have anything illegal. The entitled girl then says, she was putting gear on her knee. I saw her. Do you mean my knee brace? Yeah, she needs that. I was notified about the knee brace, said the head black belt. It's perfectly legal for OP to wear it. She needs it if she wants to compete safely. No, it's illegal. My daughter has to fight someone with reinforced knees. How is that fair? Why is your daughter aiming for the knees? Yeah, and not to mention, OP and your daughter wouldn't even be sparring each other. They're in completely different belt rank divisions. But why does she even need it? She can walk just fine. Well, if you have to know, I've had knee problems for years. Just ask anyone from my dojo. I got into an accident a while back and it just made things worse i did physio and now i can walk properly but my knee could give out if i'm not careful still my daughter will be competing for grand champion how your daughter's an orange belt she's not going to be allowed to compete it's a black belt division but that's enough op is competing but if you don't stop pressing this issue your daughter won't be the head black belt then turns to me Go and get the rest of your G on. Good luck in competing. Thank you, Mr. HB. The entitled girl did get to compete and lost, while I did the exact same thing. Uh, Still, the person who won deserved that gold. Anyway, this isn't as bad as many stories I've read on this subreddit, but I thought I'd share this woman's audacity. Yeah, so I reckon what's going on here is that this entitled mum is telling her daughter to aim for the knees. Because there's no other reason why having a knee brace there would ever impact you. You don't go for the knees in karate or jujitsu, do you? I mean, look, I don't do it. Comment down below. It seems a weird thing to do. And also, it's not as if it's like made of metal or something. It's just a little brace, right? That gives the person support. I mean, I wear ankle braces when I play football, right? Because my ankles are a bit dodgy. I've pretty much dislocated both. Uh, but let's not talk about that. It, it, the whole point is, it just gives you some stability. Like if I go up to someone when I'm playing football and I kick them with my ankle, they're not going to go, oh, ow, your ankle brace that's made of, I don't know, cotton. That really hurt. Weird. Once again. But uh, hey, this is our session titled Parents. And we've come to expect that, haven't we? And now for our fourth entitled parent story. Entitled parent demands expensive pedigree cat for free, then demands I compensate her for her losses when she returned the cats. I am a 33 year old woman and I am an educational therapist. I help students with learning differences and for some cases I go to their homes for our sessions. I also help connect potential cat adopters with shelter cats. I've had cats for 13 years and I'm on cat number four. Enter the entitled mother in her mid 40s of one of my students, a 16 year old boy who is an only child. She asked me about owning a cat and I very excitedly shared my experiences. 
and gave her the contact of the woman who runs the cat shelter I got cat four from. The family has only ever had hamsters and goldfish in a bowl prior to this. So I told the parents to manage expectations because every pet owner knows that every pet, be it dog, cat, birds, is different and has its own personality. So don't compare it to others. Be patient, loving, and respect its boundaries. The cat shelter contact then called me, ranting that her shelter and another have blacklisted the entitled mum from adopting because she was delusional, demanding, entitled, and had tons of red flags of being the sort of owner who abandons their cat at the first sign of health issues or behavioral problems. These were the entitled mum's demands. One, only ragdolls, Bengals, Siamese, Siberian, Norwegian forest cats. Cat people will know that these are the most expensive pedigree cats and can easily start from $1,000. Two, kittens, only because they're cute but she wants them well-trained, obedient, and quiet. Three, intact, which means not sterilized, because she wants to breed it in the future. And four, no health or behavioral issues. Yeah, ban her entitled Bart. Lord knows which rescuer still gave them an extremely docile and affectionate three-year-old ragdoll mix. On day three of them owning that cat, I got a text asking how to make a cat less clingy. The entitled dad was really annoyed that the cat would approach them asking for pet and scritches daily. He wants to train the cat for pets once every three to four days, ideally once a week and not multiple times a day. The heck? The parents complain that petting once a day for two to five minutes is far too much too often. Ugh, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. The dad then starts complaining that the cat doesn't come when they call him by the name they gave him three days ago. He complains about cat zoomies at 3 a.m., complains that the cat sits on a shelf and silently watches them, complains that the cat has pee and poop smells. The most stupid minor things trigger him, and he was the one who wanted to get a cat in the first place. Day four. The entitled dad has a mental breakdown. He's been staying late in the office, supposedly crying for the last two nights to avoid going home to the cat. He then packs a bag and goes and stays with his parents. What am I reading, guys? The dad then issues his wife an ultimatum. Get rid of the cat or I'm never returning home. On day six, the cat is finally rehomed to a sane, non-entitled cat owner. This morning, when I was at their home for a session, the entitled dad starts blaming me for the cat, that I manipulated and pressured the wife to get a cat, and that they'd wasted $250 for that one week of owning a cat. Against my advice of buying just a small one pound bag of kibble and a few cans to try out, the mum bought a 40 pound bulk bag of kibble. She also bought fancy ceramic bowls with a custom engraved bowl stand and a super luxe cat tree. They couldn't get a refund for those items. He then stated that I give their son two free sessions to make up for the money they wasted because it was my fault that I pushed the mum to get a cat they didn't want. Um, what? I'm still in utter disbelief. I'm still trying to figure out why and how the dad snapped and went completely insane. He clearly needs help. I'm surprised the kid turned out normal and overall nice because his parents are insane entitled nut jobs. Poor kid, the deck is stacked against him. But guys, don't worry, there is some good news. The entitled dad and entitled mum have been blacklisted from all animal shelters in a one hour driving radius. Adoption forum moderators and major rescuers have also been informed. Sadly though, they can still go to sketchy sites and less responsible breeders who care more about profit than the pet's welfare. You know what, OP, that is good news and I'm happy to hear that because look, as you say, there's a limit to what you can do, but I feel like you and the people of your town, city, one hour driving radius is very, very good stuff. I mean, that is a that is a lot, isn't it? If these entitled parents are now going to go out and find a cat, another one, then it's going to be very tough for them to get one. And that's the main thing. Make it as hard as possible for these idiots to ever get a cat again. I cannot believe that after just one week, the dad is giving the mum an ultimatum. Unbelievable. So unbelievable that it made my voice break for a second. And you know what? Fair play to the kid for not being like his parents. I always say it, but that is one of the most surprising things. If you have entitled parents and then you have a normal kid, it's just shocking because uh, you know what? Fair play to the kid. He's realized that his parents are stupid. Um, He would have taken care of the cat. That's for sure. His parents... Less so. You're still by. I thought you'd grow out of that once we started dating. Entitled Mummy breaks up with me for laughing at her son. This is the second time now getting cheated on has led to me being dumped. At least this time it wasn't totally baffling. So, I've been dating this guy for about four months now. 
He's not my usual type as he's very naive and sheltered, whereas my life has been a joyous ride of how in the name of flapjacks did I survive that BS? He's nice and funny. We met at uni and for the most part, it was fine. There were a few red flags, like his mum still irons and folds his undies and socks for him, but let's be real, people in their early 20s still living at home is not even a shocking thing anymore. I just think it's a bit psychotic to iron socks, but hey, that's just me. Anyway, on Saturday, he went out for a lads night with his friends. He hooks up with a girl, they have sex, and yesterday she messaged me on Facebook to basically say, sorry, I was drunk and slept with your boyfriend. I had no idea he was in a relationship. I'm really sorry. I was fine with it. I thought it was nice for her to reach out and let me know. She's actually really cool and we chatted for a bit and decided to go and grab a Costa together on Thursday. I like talking to her and we've got a lot in common. This is completely platonic. Now, I mentioned in my last post that monogamy isn't really my thing. Unless we've had a discussion and agreed to be monogamous, I do not care. I don't tend to sleep with people in general. I've got a low sex drive due to pure exhaustion and cancer. So if you want it and I'm not up for it, go get it somewhere else. I don't care. Just use condoms and don't be with the same person multiple times because there's a difference between casual sex and multiple relationships. He gets home and I casually mention that the girl messaged me and we've been talking and i reassure him i don't mind that he slept with someone else i just prefer in future if he wears a condom and i hope he wouldn't mind getting tested before we sleep together again he was fine with all of that and was really surprised with how well i took it but i discussed my feelings on monogamy with him before we started dating so it wasn't a massive shock like it was to the last prat then i make an offhanded joke saying next time you decide to sleep with a hot girl let me know and if i'm up for it maybe we can turn it into a threesome it was said jokingly and i was 100 joking and then he said why would you want to sleep with another girl this is where the overall stupidity kicks in I remind him I am bisexual and he says exactly what it says in the title with a really confused face He says you're still bi. I thought you'd outgrow that when we started dating He follows this up with my mum said you would because bisexuality is just a phase I face palmed like I threw my hands in my forehead so hard my butt jiggled from the force of the slap It was just so ridiculously stupid for a 24 year old male in the 21st century of britain to be saying these kinds of things like i know you're naive but do you not watch tv do you not go on social media what in the name of rupaul do you think sexuality is at 24 to think bisexuality is a phase i didn't know what to say i stood looking at him like he just sprouted another head out of his armpit and may i point out this guy is doing a bsc in sociology a course i did for undergraduate and i know that sexuality and gender are two things very much covered in any sociology course i was floored it took me a few minutes to regain my composure and i realized i had two options Laugh at the sheer ridiculousness of a 24 year old male having not only discussed my sexuality with his mum, but had believed her when she told him I'd grow out of it. Or I could try and explain sexuality to an adult sociology student. I knew the status of my relationship was at stake with whatever decision I made. I contemplated hard and then I laughed so hard my bladder nearly burst. Sorry, not the mature decision, but you know what? I don't care. It was freaking hilarious. He'd said it with such honest innocence. Look, I can live with his mum ironing his socks and I can live with his mum still buying his clothes and taking him to get a haircut because honestly, I've got my own shortcomings and if he can tolerate those, I can tolerate his. But I will not live with someone being so clueless about sexuality. Maybe I'm the entitled one here. Maybe I have too high of an expectation of people but hey ho he of course got mad that i laughed at him he started shouting and i kid you not he managed to fit my mum says mum said that and but my mum is into one 45 ish second monologue seven times i would do a lot of things for love but i won't compete with mummy frankly i just didn't feel enough for him to even try he grabbed his backpack called his mum to come and get him and then left That night, after chatting with the girl he slept with and laughing some more, his mother sent me this text. I cannot believe you would humiliate my son like that, you selfish, stupid little bitch. You are a fat, ugly slut who is using bisexuality, spelt just like that. Okay, so B-I-S-E-U-X-L-A-I-T-Y. Wow, that's unbelievable. 
as an excuse to hawk around. I know your type, and you've just thrown away the best thing you'll ever have with my son. My son deserves way better than a fat little sl- like you. You are scum. We'll be coming tomorrow to get the rest of his things from your house, and I will be bringing my brother to deal with you if you try and pull anything. He knows how to deal with trash. If you try and steal anything, I'll call the police. You'd better be there when we get there. Scum. So yeah, not only did his mother break up with me for him, though I'd pretty much expected the breakup, she also called me some lovely names. Unfortunately, I couldn't be there. I had to text her back asking what time she'd be coming, ignoring everything else, and she didn't respond. No way in Hades was I waiting around all day for this lunatic, her brother, and son to turn up for his laptop, toothbrush, and some random bits of clothes. This brings me to this morning. I popped all his stuff in a bag and left it by the front door, except his laptop, which was on the table next to the front door, just because I didn't want to break it. I do the school run for my sister every morning because she doesn't drive. Off we go at 8.20. We drop my gorgeous little nephew off at school at 8.50, get home for half nine, having stopped at the shop on the way home as my sister needed to pick up a few bits for the boyo. Guess who is there, waiting outside my front door? If you'd guess the tantruming trio, you'd be right. If you'd guess the police, you'd also be right. Most logical people would say, hmm, she's not home. Guess we'll have to wait or come back later. But... An entitled mum with serious emotional incest issues. She's not in. We should break into her house. I get there and this witch is handcuffed in the back of a police car. My double glazed stained glass window pane that has a rose decoration broken into sections by bits of metal looks as though it's gone three rounds with a rock because it had. And my ex's uncle is shouting at the officer that I'm a thief and they were just coming to get what was my ex's. The officer reminds him, even if they were trying to retrieve his property, breaking and entering is still a crime. The police officer then approaches me and says, Good morning, miss. This gentleman says you had arranged for them to come and collect this young man's possessions this morning. Is that true? I replied with, No, my ex's mum sent me this message last night. I show him my phone. And she didn't reply with the time. But she does know that I do the school run every day, so I'm not sure why they chose now. The officer reads over my phone, calls over his colleague, and they go over to the witch in cuffs. They ask her, what did you mean when you told this girl your brother will deal with her? The witch starts to babble, the brother gets very quiet, and my ex just looked lost. Also, his brother is basically the same height as me, and I have more fat in one butt cheek than he does in his entire body, so I could definitely take him. I'm just completely bemused at this point. The officers come back over and explain that because she was caught in the act by police attempting to break into my house, I do not have a choice about pressing charges. And I ask if I'd like to add harassment and making threats to the list. I'm in the middle of a court case already due to a certain lunger, and I really don't have the mental capacity right now, so I decline. They take pictures of the damage, not that there was much. I give them my ex's stuff so he can leave, and off they go. Once I clean the window, there is a tiny crack on the outside glass that did not affect the front pane. So, I'm now 15 stone lighter and getting a little flirty with the girl he slept with on Saturday. What am I taking away from this relationship? Well, if mummy irons his undies, regardless of age, run, fast and far, and preferably with a pretty brunette in the future. I hope you enjoyed and wish me luck for tomorrow for my maybe not so platonic costa with the girl he cheated on me with. And there we go, guys. In case you're wondering, this entitled mum has now confirmed that uh, bisexuality is something that you grow out of. It's good to know because I didn't know that myself. Um, so now that I do, wow, I feel enlightened and uh, wow, very, very happy that I've now gained this knowledge. I can move on with my life now. In all seriousness, what an idiot. Uh, that is probably the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. It's definitely up there. The fact that this bloke is just a massive mummy's boy as well is just sad ultimately. Nothing wrong with your mum doing some things for you. Uh, trust me, I still live at home. But you know, ironing socks. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a red flag in itself. Come on. I think this guy's reliance to just go with whatever his mum says is very, very strange. Like, come on. He's 24 and he has none of his own opinions. He just has to go with whatever his mum suggests. That's embarrassing. 
forget the stuff about you know his mum does everything for him the fact that he is pretty much just non-existent as a human he is just his mum reincarnated is the most embarrassing thing let's be realistic the only slight positive you can take from this op is that at least you found this out about this bloke long before you've you know got into something way too serious with him like imagine you marry him and then you realize what his mother's like that's the only sort of positive you can take this happened at this point and not further down the road look not all guys are like this that's for sure but some Wow. To be honest with you guys, it just does baffle me. In the year 2022, some people think that sexuality is a choice. Newsflash. It's not. I mean, who knew that? Not me personally. Um, and you know what's funny as well is that I know that I'm going to get a comment on this video that says something like, it is a choice. What are you talking about? Like genuinely, even some of you watching right now, yes, in the, in the vast minority, of course, there will be at least one person who will comment on this video something ridiculous like, you know, the stuff I've just said. And you know what? I will pin that comment. Just just to make uh, an example of them and you watching this outro right now will now go into the comments if you're on youtube and see it and laugh with me and we'll all laugh together at the horrificness of some opinions in the year 2022 karen steals my phone to play wordle last week i had a dentist appointment i get there speak to the receptionist sit on the sofa and go on my phone for a few minutes while waiting to be called then all of a sudden i realize something truly shocking i haven't done today's wordle yet i'm a night owl so i usually do it in the early hours but for whatever reason i hadn't done so on this day i pride myself as a wordle connoisseur Quirdles, octordles, sedacordles, duotrigordles, nerdles, weldles, even some mantles. I love them all. So, almost missing today's wordle was, as you can imagine, extremely embarrassing. Anyway, as I get on the New York Times website, a woman and her son enter the practice. The kid's probably around six or seven years old. Pretty standard stuff for your mum to accompany you to the dentist at that age. At this point, I had no concerns over this mum and her son. They seem polite and pretty normal. The mum was chatting on her phone at a normal decibel level and then hung up to check in. Now, maybe it's because I live in the UK rather than the US, but you don't tend to get straight up crazy entitled people where I'm from. Back to the important stuff. I'm pondering over my starting word as they are speaking with the receptionist. I opt for stare, a go-to classic of mine that has always treated me well. R and E both flash orange, a decent start. As I'm thinking of what to go for next, the mum and her son come over to the sofa and sit down next to me, waiting for their appointment too. As I'm about to enter my second word, bored. By the way, I play on hard mode, and if you don't, you are a filthy cheat. The mum peers over and looks at my phone. Again, at this point, she genuinely seemed all right, just interested in what I was doing. Hey, look, Charlie, look at what that boy is playing on his phone, she says to her son. Her kids seem relatively interested, to be fair, leading the woman to ask me about what exactly I was doing. Excuse me, what game is that? I happily explained to her what Wordle is, how it's seemingly taken over the world, and how it's a pretty simple word-based game that can be played by anyone, really. Her and her son may even enjoy it. Oh, amazing! I've been trying to get Charlie to play some more intellectual games and puzzles, so that looks great. Would you mind letting him have a quick go? Now, at this point, I delve deeper into the concept of Wordle. I explain that everyone in the world has the exact same puzzle to solve each and every day, and that you only get one chance per device. I tell her that I'm just in the middle of today's wordle, jokingly tilting my screen away from her so as not to show her my first and second guess. This is where her demeanor begins to change a little. Oh, come on. It'd be really great of you to let him have a go. He's only six. She says this with an innocent chuckle, but I'm already getting the sense at this point that she probably isn't going to take no for an answer. I explain to her once again how the game works, that you do only get one chance per device. I tell her the website and explain that she is more than welcome to give her son a go on her own phone, but for whatever reason, she just doesn't really seem to understand. I'm not entirely sure what exactly she couldn't comprehend, whether it was my explanation or the game itself, but she quickly became quite adamant that Charlie needed to have a go on my phone and now. I tried one last time to be polite, imploring her to use her own phone. I'll get the website up for you, it will take two seconds, but no. It had to be my phone. Now look, I'd be lying if I said that something crazy happened after this. Ultimately, I'm a 23-year-old guy and this woman wasn't totally mental. She just needed to chill. 
I explained to her that I'm not going to give her my phone and that given everything that's going on in the world right now, I probably wouldn't anyway, even if you could reset the game and let someone else have a fresh go. To be fair to Charlie, the kid didn't really seem to mind. If anything, he seemed to understand what I was saying far more than his mum. She was actually getting pretty irate at this point, demanding that I let her son have a go. I just sat there trying to be as polite as I could while laughing in my own head. Explanations were done at this stage. I just had to deal with her. Don't get me wrong. I was very, very tempted to quickly finish the world on myself, pass on my phone, and then spoil today's word. But I thought that wouldn't be fair to Charlie. He seems like a decent bloke. So I sat there. I took another minute or so of her ranting about me being selfish, rude, etc. Until I was called by the receptionist for my appointments. I didn't think there was much point in arguing and I couldn't really be bothered. Fair play to the receptionist though, who must have been able to overhear our conversation and this mum's demands. While calling me for my appointment, she actually offered the Karen her phone to go on and have an attempt at today's word. Not something I would have done, but I admire her patience and generosity. However, this Karen clearly still didn't understand the concept of the game. It had to be my phone and only my phone I just sighed and walked into the dentist's office. So that was it. Not a crazy interaction, but a weird one nonetheless. Funnily enough, the hygienist went to town on my teeth that day. Still less painful than my experience with this Karen. So there you go. That is my own personal story of how this Karen tried to steal my phone to play Wordle at the dentist. Uh, Unbelievable stuff. As you guys know, I really don't tell you a lot about my own experiences with Karens that often because they don't happen that often at all. I've only ever done it once before. If you haven't seen that video, click the I button right here. That was a weird one as well. Um, It wasn't too crazy. You know, I read these stories sometimes where Karens just go absolutely mental when they scream and like, you know, get arrested, etc, etc. Personally, I have never had that happen to me my experiences have always been quite you know low-key like this one but still funny nonetheless and i thought i'd bring you guys this one now the next story in today's episode isn't about me but let me tell you it is just as entertaining let's get into it entitled parents stole my switch and held it hostage because i wasn't visiting anymore i am a 20 year old guy and i moved out of my parents house at 18 because i really can't stand them and it's for all the kinds of reasons that you can guess they were jerks They favored my younger siblings. They used me as free childcare. They told me what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine and all that BS. When I left, my dad told me not to let the door hit me on my way out and don't come back. I got the smallest, cheapest apartment I could find and I've worked the same full-time job for two years. My parents didn't even hold out a month before calling me and begging me to come back home because without me, someone else had to watch my siblings. I refused because now I finally had time for myself. My dad eventually called me and actually demanded I move back home and pay them rent instead because family is more important than my personal independence. I said back to him that my life is important too and for once, I'm getting to live for myself. So he basically said, well then see how long you can last without us. And we didn't talk for months. I don't know what he was hoping for. I managed well enough by myself. My family seemed to slowly accept that I wasn't going to come crawling back. And over time, we seemed to mend things. I could tell they were having a hard time dealing with the fact things were on my terms and not theirs. They begged me to watch my younger siblings from time to time, even though the two that are closest to me in age are in their mid-teens now. But my parents don't want to put babysitting on them any more than they have to which is hypocritical of them since they try to put it on me as much as possible and yes i have called them out on that they responded with gaslighting and more months of silence yet again and again they were the ones to come crawling back to me for help not long ago i bought myself a used nintendo switch though i could only afford one game for it at the moment which was mario kart i got it bundled with the console for a good deal My mum came by on a Saturday and asked me to watch my two youngest siblings for a while. She basically pushed them in the door at me and ran. And I was stuck with these two rowdy kids all day in my tiny apartment. My mum didn't come back until after 9pm. And that was because I called her and made her come and get the kids. And she really didn't like that I cut her fun time short. I said that unless she wanted to pay me, I wasn't going to be watching my siblings all day anymore. And next time, I'm not even going to open the door. I'll call the cops if she just leaves them outside. The next morning, I realized I couldn't find my switch anywhere. So I called my parents. And like I thought, one of my siblings had taken it. I said I was coming over to get it right away. But my mum said it could wait because my youngest sibling was gaming on it. And she didn't have the heart to take it away. 
I said it was taken without my permission and I will be taking it back. So I got on my bike and rode there ASAP. When I arrived, my sibling was crying because the switch's battery had gone dead and they didn't have a charger. I told them to give it back. But my dad took it and said I can have it back when I agreed to start helping out with my siblings more. I told him if that's how he wanted to play this, I'd get the police involved. And no, I wasn't bluffing. He dug his heels in and insisted I wouldn't do it until I pulled out my phone and started dialing. My mum yelled, wait, and hurriedly took my switch back from my dad. He called her a traitor and demanded she return it to him instead of me. But she said it wasn't worth having the police called on them. Before leaving, I told them if this ever happens again, I'd be calling the police first. And if they want a switch from my siblings so bad, they can go and get their own. My dad yelled that I can't disrespect him like that. And I countered that even though I'm an adult, he's not bothered to ever show an ounce of respect to me. And I'd had enough. Then I walked out with him yelling at me to come back and face him. Right now, it's back to silence from them. My mum texted me once, begging me to still watch my siblings. I said that if she wanted me to babysit so badly, she could pay me and I'd only take the money in advance because I'm not doing it for free anymore, especially after they stole from me and tried to keep from returning my property. They don't own me. I'm an adult with my own place and my own life and they can either get used to that or get lost. It's been over a week since that text convo and none of them has of yet even talked to me again, which is fine. They can deal with their own mess. Wow, and there we go. Um, a bit more of a intense story than, than my own experience there. But uh, wow, what do you even say to that? Should at the moment where your own mum like leaves two children on your doorstep, be just like, you know what, no, I'm calling the police at this point. Like, come on, you can't just do that. That's got to be illegal. I know you're related and all. I know you're family, but you, you can't do that. That's child abandonment, isn't it? Well, anyway, I've got to say, uh, I'm quite thankful in many ways that I don't have my own personal stories to tell about my entitled family because they're not entitled. Because wow. Living with a family like this, toxic as that, God, horrible. It sounds like you're already on your way there, OP, but yeah, cutting ties, chilling out, not seeing them as much as you can, moving out as you have done, fair play to you for doing that and getting a stable job and just, yeah, getting them gone. Continue doing that, cut the ties as much as you can, that's what I'd say, because they are mental. My dad doesn't want my mum to get further cancer treatments. I've already vented to my friends about this, but I still can't stop overthinking the whole situation. I'll try to explain things from the beginning without going too deep into the details. My mum was diagnosed with cancer mid last year. They seem to have, thankfully, caught it in good time and she's had a few treatments so far, most notably being surgery in the beginning, then chemotherapy when it was found she still had cancer in her system. The chemo really hit her hard most especially towards the end. But thankfully, she finished chemo around a month ago and it's like she's back to her old self again. However, she's been aware that she may have to have radiotherapy depending on the outcome of the chemo. She got a call to say that they'd like her to have radiotherapy as a precaution to fully ensure the cancer is gone. Mum's obviously not dancing happily with this news, but she's a freaking fighter and she'll get through this. Her loved ones will do all we can to help her too. I'm super proud of her for overcoming all of this. Then there's my dad in quotation marks. When he found out mum had initially been diagnosed last year, he immediately started telling her not to get treatment for it. To shorten his general reasoning, it only kills you quicker. It doesn't really help you in the long run. I've listened to him saying things like that all my life. I had cancer treatment myself when I was a kid. I was diagnosed at four and my parents were told I'd need chemotherapy at six. My dad was against it. And if it hadn't been for my mum, I likely wouldn't have gotten that treatment. Earlier tonight, mum told him she'll be starting radiotherapy in the near future. And no surprise to anyone, he lost it. He started yelling at her, telling her not to get the treatment. And the icing on the cake, he told my mum, your friend had chemotherapy and radiotherapy a couple of years ago and she still died. Why would you be any different? Mum reminded him that another friend of hers also went through the two treatments and is now back to living her life and is as healthy as ever. She's actually been a major support to my mum and I'm so thankful and grateful that mum has had her along with several other people. At this point, dad muttered some BS arguments saying more fool her, referring to mum's second friend, then stormed out of the house, slamming the door behind him. Uh, I'm not really sure why I'm posting this to Reddit in all honesty. 
I just wanted to vent and I guess I felt like just writing everything out without it reaching anyone other than myself wouldn't help as much and I didn't want to just bombard my friends with all of this. I mean, I told them, yeah, but everyone has their own struggles to deal with in life and I don't want to add to anyone's. So I guess Reddit's anonymity helped me there. I think I keep typing because I'm so uncertain about clicking that post button. I don't know. My head's even more of a freaking mess right now than it usually is. Thanks for reading my not so mini mini ran anyway. Just a quick question to you, OP, and to your mum. Why, uh, why is your dad still even in your lives? He just sounds like one of the worst people I've ever heard of. Literally referencing your mum's friend who has died from cancer after going through chemo and radiotherapy, knowing that she is doing the exact same thing. What is with that? I mean, it's bad enough saying, no, don't get chemotherapy and radiotherapy, which scientifically is proven to help. But on top of that, then just referencing other people that have died from cancer as well. How is your mum going to feel about that? Clearly, she is super strong and it's a good thing that she's got good people around her like her friends who can say no do this don't don't even think about his opinion like do what you want to do but wow what a horrible person Jeez. now for our next entitled parent story monkey boat from heck this took place last year it doesn't have a justice field ending i'm afraid but after seeing a similar story here i remembered this whole thing happening and i've just got to tell you about it my mum and stepdad lived down in naples florida for half the year snowbirds Every February, my wife and I take a trip down there to see them and enjoy a fleeting moment of freedom from seasonal depression. Last year, when we went down, they took us to the Naples Zoo. One of the attractions they have there is the Primate Expedition Cruise. It's actually really clever. It's a man-made pond with a half dozen or so islands, each one being its own habitat to a different type of primate. That's pretty cool. There's a few boats that tour guides pilot around talking about the different species and what makes them unique. Well, I've never seen gibbons before, so we got ourselves in line. A few moments later, we were joined by the antagonist of our story, an entitled mum in her 40s and her daughter, who was about five-ish. At first, there was nothing amiss. It was a nice day, partly overcast and decent temps. I was with my family on vacation, and my biggest concern at that moment was what ice cream bar I was going to get after we got off the boat. All seems right with the world. Soon it was time to board and we climbed on and found our seats. That's when the kid suddenly had a massive freak out on the plank. She doesn't want to get on the boat and is screaming the scream that only little kids are capable of. That special kind of primordial and inescapable wail that permeates your eardrums and touches the part of your brain that contains an incredibly deep capacity for exceptional violence locked safely away from the rest of the world for its safety. The kid didn't want to be on the boat. Something about it freaked her right out. Understandable. The water's murky and who friggin' knows, there could be monsters down there. I taught kids her age how to swim in water just like this for four years. I get it. Her mother, however, freaking doesn't. And she refused to get off. The mum said that she waited in line that whole time and she wanted to go and see the monkeys. The kid, terrified and unable to communicate any other way, just sat there and screamed. The staff went to the entitled mum and said, look, this has to stop. She either calms down or you get off before we set off. It's not fair to everyone else. It's a 20 minute ride. Is she going to be okay? And sure enough, the mum just said, she'll be fine. The mum manages to get her kid to calm down enough to quietly sit her in her seat by grabbing her by the arm and forcing her to do so. Now this didn't sit right with any of us and a few older women spoke up only for this mum to snap at them to mind your own business, my kid, my parenting style, blah, blah, blah. At this point, all the passengers are fuming and give the staff look like, dude, just boot them off. I know how this is going to go down. You know how this is going to go down. Everybody else aboard knows. The entire mum and her kid know. People on Reddit reading this a year later know, please don't set off with them aboard. So we set off with them aboard. And the second we pulled away from the deck, the kid hits play on her, make everybody in a two mile radius, head to a fallout shelter playlist right on cue. The next 20 minutes was the longest 20 minutes of my entire life. The tour guide tried as hard as she could to power on and give the tour, but even with her microphone and PA system turned up to 11, none of us managed to hear a single word she said over the screech of the banshee sitting in the front row. As we passed the islands, the spider monkeys, lemurs and gibbons woken up from their mid-afternoon nap would look over at our boat with an expression of, 
what in the actual frick is that? The rest of us passengers made it through by giving each other knowing looks and imagining dumping the two off on one of the islands. But as all terrible things do, this too came to pass and we made it back to shore. The tour guide stepped off and walked away as soon as the boat touched the dock, abandoning the boats and leaving the shore crew to tie her up and drop the plank. The entitled mum and her kid were the first to disembark. The mum took a spot nearby and started laying into her kid, who I'll remind you is five years old. Nobody said anything to her, preferring instead to just put as much distance between themselves and her as possible, just like the tour guide. As we walked off and saw the scolding, I passed by close enough to overhear her parenting. What I heard I won't repeat. It reminds me too much of my own childhood. But to say that the entitled mums probably got sociopathic tendencies would be an understatement. The kids started to ugly cry, much differently than on the boat, and I honestly just felt so sorry for her. She's just a kid who was afraid and freaking out, and her mum did F all to comfort her. Instead, the mum took it personally, believing her five-year-old kid was doing it on purpose to embarrass her. That's why she's not labelled as an entitled kid in this story. She's just a kid. It was the entitled mum who said she'd be fine when she wasn't. The entitled mum who convinced the staff to let them stay. The entitled mum who put her wants and needs above her own daughter's comfort, as well as the other dozen or so people aboard. The kid was just being a kid. It was her mum who was the entitled little idiot. But that's all I've got for you. We didn't epically confront the entitled mum or step in to be superheroes to the kid. We effed off to go and get ice cream and feed the giraffes. It was about an hour later that we could finally hear properly again. Oh, great story. And you're absolutely right to not label this kid as entitled. She's just being a kid, man. Come on. Five years old and getting berated by her mum for, for being scared of water. Like That's what was going on there, really. This mum is just being a horrible person. And it's actually quite nice to not see an ending of an entitled parent story where the mum gets arrested or everyone, you know, beats her up or something silly that probably didn't happen. This is the, the brutality of entitled parenting. People don't really tend to get involved. It isn't really your space. Even as much as you'd like to probably go over there and, uh, and give her a lesson of how to actually parent her child properly and tell her not to just scream at her child who is just scared. It doesn't normally happen, does it? It's not realistic. So uh, yeah, great story. Loved it. Shame that that 20 minute boat ride was ruined because that is a great idea. Can you imagine going on a boat and just going from like island to island full of monkeys? That's naughty. I'll back that. I might go to Florida and do it. But uh, yeah, shame it was ruined. Oh, well, hope you enjoyed your ice cream. And now for our third entitled parent story. Our restaurant's buffet is not your dinner plate, mom. I've heard a lot of stories from the sub and the story I have today fits perfectly here. This story took place about a month ago and still makes me angry because of the lack of care these parents had for their kids or even the people around them. In fact, it didn't seem like they were entitled at all, but just oblivious. R slash oblivious parents, anyone? So for a quick background. I work as a hostess in one of the main restaurants in a popular resort. We're the only restaurant on property that opens for breakfast. And although we use menus, we tend to run buffets when our occupancy is high enough to keep up with the large crowd. The buffet pretty much has what you'd expect, like eggs, bacon, cereal and pastries we bake in-house. And we usually run it from 6 to 11 or until we run out of food, which rarely happens. We tend to get rushes closer to 9am on most days. But on Sundays, when people are checking out, it can start earlier, depending on what kind of guests we have. Obviously, just like any buffet, we have tongs and spoons to serve the food, and it's a self-serve system. It was close to maybe 9 or 10 on a Sunday when this story happened, and I was the hostess for the day. We were starting to pick up in business at the time, but it wasn't going to be packed until the next hour or so when the restaurant would start shifting to lunch and the checkout time would begin in the lobby. I'm standing at the host desk arranging tables on a computer when I'm approached by our stars of the show. Three ladies, probably in their early to mid 30s, and their four sons, all around seven or eight years old. The moment I start to greet them, the boys all run past me into the restaurant where they all start chasing each other around tables, chairs, and even servers. I look up at the ladies and internally sigh as I notice that not one of them has noticed what was going on and were either talking to me or to each other. And immediately, I knew this was going to be trouble. Now, something you should know about me is that I can be somewhat of a goody two-shoes. When I see people, even kids, misbehaving in any way, I get really frustrated and sometimes feel like it's my job to do something about it, even when it's not my place. 
I'm a little more understanding with children because, well, they're kids. Most kids don't learn the real meaning behind right and wrong until they're likely in the double digits. So I try to think that it's fine when the parents intervene. Another thing is that I have ADHD and I tend to get easily emotional depending on specific circumstances. I can be easily excited, stressed, angry, or sad. And if I let them run too much, then I often act on them, such as saying or doing something that wouldn't exactly be acceptable in various circumstances. It can be anywhere from being too loud, saying something personal in the heat of a moment, or revealing opinions that are better kept private than said out loud. I know it's better to stay quiet and let things play out, but in this moment, I couldn't help but say something. Excuse me, mom, can you call your kids back before they get hurt? I kid you not. It was like this woman just woke up from a trance when I said this because her first response was, oh, uh, right. And she started calling for the kids to come back as I took them to a table. I know it wasn't my place, but a part of me thought that maybe bringing attention to the situation would make things easier. Maybe the ladies would control their kids once they were inside the restaurant and maybe I just distracted them. I thought maybe they were just tired or something. I was wrong. As the hour continued, the restaurant started filling up a lot more, meaning more people walking around the restaurant. I was busy for a while, so I didn't really pay attention to the ladies' table until about half an hour had passed. And by that point, the boys were right back to treating the restaurant like a playground and had added a game of catch to their list of activities. They seemed to be having a lot of fun throwing a large stuffed animal in the air with all their strength without paying much attention to the fully occupied tables they were inches away from hitting. There was one man in particular, an elderly fellow, who was inches away from being hit by the toy multiple times. He was not oblivious to this fact, and I noticed relatively quickly that he was glaring at me a few times. Since I was busy and had given it to a server already, there wasn't much I could do at that moment, nor could their server. I just kind of hoped it'd stop before it would get worse, but it took way too long for it to. And then it was 11 a.m. And for the first time I'd ever seen, we had to close down because some of the stations were out of food. It was definitely a busy day for sure. As usual, we started informing guests about last call as we start transitioning to lunch and getting rid of the food. By this point, the boys had stopped playing around, and I noticed one of the ladies with her son in tow was filling a to-go container with pastries to take with her. This wasn't a bad thing, since the food was going to be tossed at the end anyway, but I did notice something else. The woman, tongs in hand, picked up one of the pastries from the station and started to feed her child with our tongs. I just stood there in complete shock, wondering if I'd seen that right. As she, without any hesitation, turned back to the station and put the tongs back. There was no flinching, scolding, or even any attempt to call over a staff member to replace the tongs. She just walked away. And that's when I pretty much snapped and went into full-on hyper-focused anger. I quickly charged over to the station and grabbed the tongs before ducking into the kitchen where a few of my co-workers were. I didn't say anything to the woman at all, but I did say something to my co-workers. I exploded. It wasn't my proudest moment and I could have controlled myself better, but I just couldn't keep it in at that point. I just unloaded how angry I was that a person, a grown woman, could do something like that while my co-workers were just stunned. They'd known about that table's behavior the whole morning and had told me to ignore it, but none of them expected this to happen at all. However, I'll admit that in that moment, I was likely way too loud. And when I turned to leave, the thought that my voice might have reached the restaurant sunk in. I was embarrassed, but I was still really angry. As I placed the new set of tongs at the buffet, I heard someone next to me say, I'm sorry about that. I didn't look to see who exactly it was, if it was the woman, her friends, or just a sympathetic witness. But I just replied rather curtly and without making eye contact that it was not okay to do something like that, especially since we were still hot off the heels of the pandemic at the time. Heck, our workplace only lifted the mask mandate that month after a handful of employees came back from quarantine, including me, by the way. I faintly remember saying more, maybe even being a little more mean, but that was the gist of it. Again, it was wrong to be angry, but dang it, you'd expect grown people to act better than that, especially when they're in front of kids. They're kids. 
Not to mention, I feel like I've personally been punished for doing something like that when I was probably five years old. It's just not appropriate at all. And not something I'd expect from even the most entitled parents I've read about on this sub. Regardless, they ended up paying and leaving not long after. And as the crowd died down significantly, I apologize profusely to my co-workers about being so angry and acting out on that. I'm not defending my actions, and if I could do that all again, I would in a heartbeat. Surprisingly, a lot of my co-workers actually agreed that what I did and said was justified. In fact, one even said that the woman deserved a taste of humility, and maybe she'd learn from that. And replacing the tongs then and there was a good call. For those who might be curious, I made a personal apology to their server as well who laughed and said that she didn't care and that she would have done the same thing too. She, of course, didn't get a tip, but she said that it wasn't a surprise because those ladies were jerks to her from the start. Please, please, please don't treat a buffet like your personal play. And also, to that random gentleman who almost got hit in the head by a stray Spider-Man doll, thanks for being patient and I hope you ended up having a good day. Well, guys, funnily enough, and I mean this, I actually am the gentleman in this story. And OP, just a little message from me to you. I actually love Spider-Man, so I really enjoyed playing throw and catch with the kids. There you go. In all seriousness, look, buffets are great, aren't they? Like you got unlimited food. You can get a, a massive selection from a variety of cuisines. Whatever's going, you can get. That is the beauty of it. But it relies on people not taking the mick like these guys. If someone just like puts their hand in a bowl right this massive full of lovely chicken or something it's ruined for everyone and this like putting tongs from your kid's mouth back into the food like that's just ridiculous it's probably wasted that full thing of food yes i get it they were closing and you were taking stuff that's fine but put it into your little bag or whatever and then go and feed it to your kid afterwards don't do it there and then in front of everyone that is so disgusting it's so weird as well guys let me know down in the comments what is the most entitled or weirdest thing that you've seen at a restaurant or a buffet because that that's right up there, that's for sure. Entitled mum calls the cops because of a stuffed toy. So, I really, really didn't think I'd ever post her. This happened about an hour ago. I am a 30 year old man and I'm an introverted person. I rarely go anywhere outside of work and laundry. Today was one of those days where I had to leave my apartment and venture into the mart of walls. I was making my usual rounds through the store to get mostly the same things I always get toiletries, candles, cleaning supplies, food, and checkouts. I noticed a little girl, probably five or six, who I will call nice kid with her entitled mother. I only noticed because the kid had on a very blinding pink shirt and hat, brighter than the sun itself. As I do with most kids, I smiled and waved and got a wave in return. That's when the entitled mum noticed her kid smiling and waving at me. And this small yet unpleasant exchange happened. Why are you looking at my kid? Huh? Uh, all I did was wave. I-, I was being polite. Sorry. Well, don't look at my kid. Are you some creep? No, I was just being polite. There's no need to get angry about her. I cut the conversation short because I hate talking to people and she was just insane for me being polite to a kid. I walked away and could feel her eyes trying to melt my head. I saw the lady and her kid two more times in the store before I checked out and each time the entitled woman would pull her cart close to her and give me a death glare. I checked out and was heading to my car and opened my trunk. In my trunk, I have a plush penis with a smiley face that I got as a gag gift from a friend. It's zip tied to the holes in the fabric of the trunk. So when you open it, it goes with the trunk and stares at you in the face I mostly have it there to get a laugh out of my co-workers Well, I hadn't noticed the entitled mum and her kid walking out of the store at the same time as me And her car happened to be one row behind mine and two cars down Yay me! It was at this time I heard a high-pitched scream and the sound of the woman stomping over with her kid in the shopping cart. What is that? She screamed, basically in my ear. What is what? That disgusting thing on your door. Are you a pervert? What, this? Pointing to my plush and chuckling. It's a smiling willy. It was a joke gift from a- She cuts me off and starts screaming at me even louder, which I didn't think was possible. I know what it is. I'm calling the police. You're a disgusting pervert. Okay, call who you want. I didn't do anything wrong. Now the lady actually stopped screaming, but she did pull out her phone and actually called 911. I sat there in disbelief that she actually dialed, but it didn't faze me really. I decided to finish loading my stuff into my trunk, close it and wait in my car for the police. I waited for about half an hour for the police, but no one came. When I looked out my window, I noticed her vehicle was gone. 
I took that as my cue and just left. I didn't see any police on the way out or through town. I've got no idea what was up that woman's butt and I don't want to figure it out or see her anytime soon. I know this isn't the craziest of things to happen, but I figured this small encounter deserved a spot here. All I know is I'll probably shop online for my stuff next week. So there we go. Not going to lie. I didn't expect to start today's episode with a story about a plush penis, but I'm all for it. It makes a change. I don't think an adult waving and smiling at a kid just saying hello and the kid waving and smiling back has ever been considered creepy it's just polite and it's nice i don't know why this karen made it more than it needed to be i mean look i get it it's good to be careful with your kids but not every person that smiles at your kid is a creep sorry also cops were never gonna come out for this plushie were they like it's an object that's owned by a man maybe it's offensive to you it's not really offensive is it they're not gonna bother with that sort of stuff are they so that's probably why the woman gave up and left and yeah ob left as well all i'll say is online shopping exists for a reason and that is to avoid people like this very good stuff now for our second entitled parent story of this episode my dad is forcing me to either quit my job or to half my hours yet refuses to support me financially despite the fact that i'm a minor is this normal for reference i'm 17 and i'm in school full time five days a week i work 12 to 8 on the weekends and i haven't had a day off other than for covid leave since august of course my seven day week schedule isn't ideal but i really appreciate the income and i've grown to like my job last summer i really struggled to find myself a job i was 16 and after dropping in and emailing 40 different employers and revising my cv about a million times i lost all hope my parents decided that i was old enough to support myself and cut me off financially including stopping giving me bus money or lifts now i live in the countryside about 20 kilometers away from all my friends so i spent the summer completely alone which was really difficult for me all of my employed friends had gotten their jobs through their parents or friends of their parents but my parents still made no effort to put in a personal word on my behalf to any employers they were on friendly terms with Anyways, August rolled around and I finally got a job at a McDonald's about a half hour drive from me after four months in isolation. My parents immediately turned their noses up at the mention of McDonald's, but I wasn't in any position to be picky and I'm still very grateful for the job. They've always put massive pressure on me to do well in school. And so to please them, I've been overexerting myself for months and have a long streak of A's and B's. Unfortunately, I miss a day or two of school on average a month because of my period. For years, I've spent once a month paralyzed with cramps and nausea, which are a million times worse than what any other girl I've talked to about this has ever experienced. I'm convinced I have endometriosis and I brought the subject up with my parents again and again over the years and I've begged them for a hospital appointment. Four years later and I still haven't seen anybody about my period pains and I still continue to miss school over it. Despite this, my parents are constantly on my back about the days that I've missed at school and yet neglect to get me any sort of help or treatment for what I'm going through. About two months ago, I missed a week of school because I was sure I had COVID, when in actuality, I just had a bad dose of tonsillitis. My parents, though, were furious when I tested negative for COVID and nagged and argued with me about it for another month until I actually did test positive and ended up missing another full week of school. I've since caught up on all the work I missed and I haven't broken my string of A's and B's. Today and yesterday, I stayed home from school because I've had another bout of tonsillitis which went untreated last time and this time as well apparently this was the breaking point for my dad and he called me down from my room and told me if i didn't either quit my job or drop down to one day a week he was going to go into my manager's office and withdraw his parental consent himself He blamed my illness on work and told me that it was unacceptable that I was missing school, saying that I needed to take a day off to dedicate wholly to study. I tried to reason with him and showed him my report cards and recent test results and told him my grades were perfect and that I couldn't be blamed for catching COVID or tonsillitis. He shut me down and told me that my grades didn't matter because the fact remained that I was still missing school. I'm unsure what to do or how to change my dad's mind. I know a seven day week is extreme for someone my age, but I've got no other option. In order to see my friends and do nice things in the city outside of school, I need funds. In order to have those funds, I need a job. My parents want me to have both a school life and a social life, 
but they won't give me a single cent out of their pocket to get me out of my countryside jail cell. Pocket money is out of the question. I've tried to negotiate my way into making some kind of deal with them by doing good in school and doing any chores they ask of me, but their argument is that I shouldn't be rewarded for doing the bare minimum of what is expected of me. Now that I have my own job, I am financially independent and can no longer be guilt tripped by them about money or by my laziness. I'm currently saving for a month long holiday during the summer and I already have deposits laid down and plane tickets bought. Still, I need to earn a little extra money to pay the entire thing off. It's my reward to myself for the effort I put in at school and for all those hours I've worked. I really want to do something nice for myself before I hunker down and inevitably quit my job for my final year at school next year. For me, my job allows me to actually do nice things for myself and to see my friends. Quitting it or slicing my income in half is not an option. Without it, my parents have made it very clear that they would not support me or give me any kind of pocket money to get a bus to see my friends or to treat myself. I've proved to my parents time and time again that I can excel in school, take care of my physical and mental health, see my friends and simultaneously work but they're still not satisfied. I'm very frustrated by this whole situation as I'm an only child who is fortunate to have two working parents who are married happily. Still, it often bothers me that I have friends with five siblings and a single mother who have better financial support than me. Of course, I know people's financial situations are not nearly as straightforward as that and I don't mean to sound spoiled, but it's frustrating for me and I wish my life could be different. What can I do? Am I being a butthole by not obeying them? Is this fair? Any advice would be appreciated so much. Guys, you know what to do. Get down in the comments. Help OP out. All right, let's get one thing straight very quickly. No, OP, you're definitely not the butthole. And you're definitely not coming across as cocky or, or, you know, being arrogant. You actually seem extremely humble. You're clearly very hardworking, very dedicated, and just a good person. It's a shame the same can't be said about your parents. Now, look, as you said, everyone's financial situation is different, and I completely accept that. But for your parents not to give you any money at all, almost forcing you, right, to go and get a job, and then berate you for having said job, that is actually just, like, shocking, isn't it? What are you expected to do in that spot? You're stuck. You're trapped. As you said, if you didn't have a job, you would be trapped, as you were for that period of time, in your countryside jail cell. You can't do that though, can you? So you're forced to get a job. I don't know what these guys are expecting of you. Surely, out of the money that you two make, you can afford to give your child a bit of money to just go and get the bus and see their pals and not have to work. And then they can put all their focus into their school stuff. I think these parents don't realize how amazing their child is, how incredible OP is. The fact that at that age, you can go and work seven days a week constantly, being financially independent and also dominating school is nothing short of unbelievable i've got to say i'm not quite sure how these two have produced you if i'm honest but hey props to you screw them move out as quickly as you can and uh yeah i guess just try and get through school but as i said guys comment down below give some proper advice to op because they're gonna watch this video trust me i know them very well now for our third entitled parent story mother-in-law doesn't know when to quit my mother-in-law and i don't get along I've tried for the sake of my husband, but this last incident was the end of the line for me. My mother-in-law has always had this overprotective aspect about her when it came to her kids, which has significantly grown worse with time. Her reasoning behind this behavior is because she felt her mother always took the side of her SO, and so she vowed to only care about her children and not their partners. That didn't bother me initially. I figured if I was on her good side, nothing to really worry about. Until you realize this woman doesn't have a good side. She'd say rude comments to all of her children's SOs. She'd always gossip about my sister-in-law's boyfriend, saying he was a drunk and always took her daughter's money, even though her daughter didn't have a job and her boyfriend would be the one paying for the apartment her daughter lived in and all of her clothes and food. She hated my brother-in-law's now ex-girlfriend because she was Chinese. She would state things like she's dirty and gross and wait for it, gave me the coronavirus. I've got no doubt in my mind that my mother-in-law is part of the reason why they ended up breaking. I never once saw my brother-in-law stand up to his mum regarding any rude comments she ever said about his girlfriend. He'd simply turn away and ask everyone else to handle her. Like, really, dude? I never understood her thought process because the things that she would come up with would be outright delusional. It was only a matter of time before that crazy would make its way towards me. And boy, did it. When we were at her house, she blew up on me one night because I wasn't doing anything. I didn't help clean up or anything, but neither did anyone else. 
Well, apparently I needed to clean off the dinner table and wash the dishes for seven people while at her house. Even my brother-in-law agreed, even though he would literally sit on his phone the entire time while everyone else does prep work or cleans. So the next night I did it, even though my husband protested against it because I was a guest at her house. She'd be in these weird moods where she wouldn't even acknowledge me when we came over. She just went straight to hugging my husband and saying how much she missed him while giving me a who's this dog look. My husband would sometimes force me to initiate the hello and hug, but it came to the point where it was like, why should I when she doesn't like me? It started to get worse when I did something, even while at my own home, mind you. She'd flip out and start yelling and all of them would need to calm her down. When she'd be at our house, she apparently would expect to be treated with the utmost respect, which is where my petty butt came back in with a no. You do not get to be disrespectful or callous to me in my own home. The icing on the cake is when my mum was with us and we stopped by to say goodbye before heading out. She was talking to my mum, asking my mother all of these weird questions about her name and everything. She took pictures with my mum and then she looked at me and then snapped. She started going off about how I'm the reason her family has so many problems. She's been through hell because she hasn't been able to see her son for so long. I was in utter shock. I didn't know what to say. I was simply looking at my husband like, what is going on? Then she gets up in my mother's face, asking her a bunch of questions about why we got married, telling my mum that I take money from them and my husband, that she sees me take away money from my husband, and that I'm a bad person. My mother didn't say a dang word. But my heart sank when she started to cry because my mum had gone through hell and back with an evil, vindictive mother-in-law of her own during her 35 years of marriage with my dad. My husband defended me and my mum, even with my mother-in-law screaming at me that she was going to call the police on me and put me in jail. He tried to talk to his mum about her behaviour and that it was unacceptable, but she refuses to apologise and she still believes she did no wrong. Her whole reasoning for snapping like that is because her friend told her that women will sometimes marry men and have them kidnapped and killed to take their benefits on top of that she doesn't think my mother is my real mum, and actually she thinks she is helping me in the process of killing my husband at this point i'm convinced my mother-in-law belongs in a mental institution my brother-in-law and sister-in-law believe that my mother-in-law did no wrong and that she had every right to behave that way They keep telling my husband that this is your family and that he should put them first before me. I told my husband that because of how disrespectful his mum was, I do not want her at our house anymore. If he'd like to go spend time with his family, he can freely do so by going to visit them. Is it wrong of me for being tired of being treated like I'm disposable to my in-laws? For asking for something as simple as common decency? I've never acted out or caused the scene in front of them. I've done so much for these people and they don't see it. Till this day, I'm still excluded from the family circle because I refuse to stand for this when behavior is rude and condescending. All right, so pretty much what OP is saying is, is it wrong of her to be tired of being treated like trash? Uh, No, that is a simple answer. There you go. Solved all your life's problems. Thank me later. I do think it's pretty incredible in stories like this where so much has happened and someone has had to suffer so much abuse that they actually get to the point where they are genuinely wondering if they are in the wrong. Like me reading this objectively as someone who doesn't know these people, it's so obvious. Like it's obvious to you guys as well, listening, watching right now, that Opie's done nothing wrong. They've actually been very patient and that this mum is completely mental. And yes, she probably, to be fair, should be in a mental hospital. The stuff about killing husbands and your mum, OP, not actually being your mum, but just a random woman helping you to do this. Yeah, that's a bit deluded, isn't it? But you get what I'm saying? It's kind of sad that OP is genuinely not sure whether she is in the wrong or not when it's so obvious that she's actually just done really well and is having to deal with someone that is an absolute psycho like this. My mum and dad are being investigated for using my social security number and identity to buy things. So my mum has taken me off of her insurance. I'm going to be sick and in excruciating pain beginning tonight and for the next week. But even though I was extremely depressed at first after going no contact with both of my parents, I've actually been feeling better until recently. I've started working and I'm supposed to be starting college next month and moving into an apartment with my cousin sometime between next month and August. 
But when my mum found out that I won't be dropping charges and I'm cooperating with the police, she told us she was taking me off of her insurance. That means I'll have to stop seeing my therapist and I cannot see the doctor I planned on seeing about how much pain I'm in on my period. Every month, I'm in so much pain, it feels like I'm being burned on the inside. I throw up, I feel nauseous, I'm weak, the pain makes me fall asleep, the pain wakes me up. It's been this way since I was 12. My mum would tell me that everyone is in pain on their period and that I was being dramatic. My mum wouldn't even allow me to take over-the-counter painkillers at first. She said that I needed to depend on God for relief. She'd rub my back and pray for me, but she said that if I had faith, then by Jesus' stripes, I would be healed. She took me to the doctor one time for my period. The doctor said I had cysts on my ovaries, especially on the right ovary. After that, she allowed me to take painkillers, but she complained about how much they would cost and how expensive the multiple amounts of pads, tissues, feminine wipes, and other products she had to buy were because my period is so heavy. A while ago, when I was still living with my mum, my aunt visited and ended up taking me to the hospital because of how much pain I was in. My mum came and they wanted to give me Percocets, but my mum rejected it. After I came out to my mum, she said that God was punishing me for being gay when I was on my period, and that was why I was in pain. Sometimes she'd raise her eyebrows and smugly say that cramps get better after a woman has had a baby, as a way to encourage me to marry a man and have children. She would say that that pain was trying to remind me that that was what was intended for women. My aunt took me to see a doctor after I moved in with her. But that doctor said that menstrual pain is normal and medication for it could lead to infertility. When I told her that I'd rather not have children than be in excruciating pain every month, she said I was too young to make that decision. My aunt scheduled an appointment with another doctor, but now my mum has taken me off of her insurance so I can't afford to see a doctor. That also means I can't see my therapist anymore. When my mum told us she was taking me off of her insurance, my aunt told her that she was literally going to be causing her child pain. My mum said that that is a sign from God and that she has been vindicated by God and started speaking in tongues and then we hung up. She also said, Honour thy mother and father and thy days shall be long, or however the verse goes. I'm sorry if that comes off disrespectfully, but the pain has started because my period will probably be on tomorrow and it's awful and I'm in severe pain. But I took her quoting that verse to mean like, if you're saying my days won't be long because I'm not honoring my parents, are you saying you're hoping my days will be short because you're taking me off of your insurance? She's also refusing to help me with my financial information for college, so I don't know whether or not I can go to college after all. My credit is messed up. I've started working, but I go through multiple packs of pads every month on my period. I have to get pads, painkillers, and other things. So I'm going to have to walk to and from work for 45 minutes to an hour every day this week so that I can afford to buy what I need for my period. And I'm gonna be sick, weak, and in pain at work. I know mum's hoping this will punish me, but what she's done and what she has said only makes me more sure that going no contact with her and pressing charges is the right thing to do. Yeah, sorry, but this is just abuse. Like, your mum's not even helping you when you're in pain. She's saying that you can't have painkillers. That is incredible. Uh, That has to be abuse, right? Look, OP, I'm so sorry that you're in such excruciating pain. I I can't even begin to imagine. Not just the pain from, you know, going through what you're going through health-wise, but also your dog of a mother being in your life at all. That combination of things. Oh, and I completely forgot that she's taking you off her insurance, so you can't even get the help you need anymore what it's unbelievable that parents can be like this it really is just going through some of the comments here and they're pretty much saying that there is a chance that she may not actually legally be able to take you off of her insurance i hope that's true i don't know what your age is op you didn't explicitly say it but if you are under 18 then you might still be okay i don't know i'll be honest i'm not an insurance expert as much as i know i do look like one but yeah in all seriousness i really do hope that you get the help you need and that you're not experiencing this incredible pain in the future wow narcissist parents wanted me to trade houses with them because i got a slightly better one and then literally stole my air conditioners when i refused to give them money i'm gonna start this off by saying that if you have a house and don't have cameras get cameras i have some now but i should have gotten them sooner i live in a pretty typical manufactured home in arizona my parents also live in one just a few streets over despite how close we are i'm very low contact because they're just bad people they treated me okay as a kid but things changed 
change as soon as I was in my late teens. I was expected to do more and pay my way as soon as I finished high school. That was fair, I was an adult by then after all, but my parents wanted a lot more in rent than what I'd have to pay to get my own apartment. I'd have had next to nothing left of my monthly paycheck if I'd given them what they wanted. So I refused to give them more than a fair amount, plus a share in utilities. And I started buying my own food as well. My father openly said this was not good enough, and my parents actually filed official paperwork to evict me when I refused to cater to their demands. So I left home and got an apartment with my best friend. Five years later, and I bought my own house in a neighborhood not far from my parents. It's just a manufactured home on a small property, but it was so dang cheap that I couldn't turn it down. And my monthly mortgage isn't bad either. I even moved my best friend in to help me cover the bills. We were already used to living in the same space, and the house gave us much more room. I may even let another friend move in to get some more rent money for the mortgage because we've got one room that's actually left unused right now since the house is a three bedroom. My parents though somehow didn't like my independence from them. Did they want me to fail or something? I don't know. But the incident that caused me going very low contact was when they demanded I trade houses with them. Yes, you read that correctly. They actually wanted to trade. Their manufactured home is smaller and older than mine and has one less bedroom. And their yard is smaller too. Not that either of us have any grass. It is Arizona after all. When they first saw my place, they looked fuming. After a couple more visits, my father actually said it wasn't fair that I was doing better than them and I was rubbing my nicer house in their faces. It's just an old manufactured home in one of the hottest states in the US. Seriously, what's to brag about? But I guess having something even slightly better than what my parents had irked them. And as I've already said, they actually demanded that we trade houses because of it. My friend who lives with me literally fell onto the couch laughing when they said that, and I couldn't help but join in. My father said it was not funny, and to give him what he wants, when I recovered my composure, I said that him and my mother were not entitled to my house or anything I own for that matter. And then I told them to get the frick out. After that, we barely spoke. And then the pandemic hit. It didn't really change my life much. I liked the peace and quiet. And my friend knows to leave me alone most of the time. My father, however, got laid off and he struggled to find another job. He ended up working in the local Mart of Walls for half a year before getting a better paying job. I did get a kick out of seeing him there when I was shopping for groceries. But as much as I hate him, I'm not going to call him a bad employee. He actually did fine. But during that time, he and my mother kept calling me and asking for money. And I know what you're all thinking. Don't lend them anything. But they didn't want loans. They wanted handouts. Why? Because they raised me and I owed them. I said if they didn't want the cost of raising a kid, they shouldn't have had one. A few weeks ago, though, my mother called me begging for money because their dinosaur of a window AC unit finally crapped out. I told them I wasn't giving them anything and they were too cheap to replace that old AC unit for a long time, so I wasn't going to buy them a new one. Mum then complained about how I have two in my house and the least I could do is give them one of mine. I then said that maybe if she and my father weren't always peeing away their money on beer and MJ all the time, they'd have the money to buy another AC. Then I said I wasn't giving them one of mine or any money. End of story. Only it wasn't the end of the story. A few days later, I came home from work to find my house had been broken into. My front door locks were drilled out and both of my window AC units were gone. Nothing else was stolen, but they went out of their way to make a huge mess for some stupid reason. Probably to make it look like a typical robbery or something. I knew it had to have been my parents and I called the police. I told them that I heavily suspected my parents of the theft because they act entitled to my stuff, even though I'm a grown man that doesn't live with them. I went with police to my parents' house, and sure enough, they had both my AC units going in their windows. When I confronted my parents, they obviously denied the theft. They claimed they already owned the AC units, but statements from their neighbors said otherwise but my parents still denied the theft. I'd bought both AC units used online years ago, which means I had no receipts for them, so I figured my only option was to look for witnesses in my own neighborhood. And as luck would have it, a neighbor across the street has security cameras, and the edge of one of them caught just enough to see my parents showing up in my father's truck. My father could be seen walking with a cordless power drill in hand, and a few minutes later, they came back to the truck with my AC units. 
then went back in to ransack the place i'm guessing with this evidence in hand police had caused to arrest my parents at first both of them acted like they'd done nothing wrong but i convinced police to let me do the talking i said they could either return the ac units to my home and clean up the mess they made or i'd let the police arrest them both right there they'd already stolen from me lied to police trespassed vandalized my house broke my front door locks and there was video evidence of what they'd done if i pressed charges they were both going to jail for sure my parents looked deflated then asked for a moment to talk with each other in their bedroom i heard a lot of shouting from both of them and i could hear my mother yelling that my father was an idiot and he was trying to blame me in turn after about five minutes of that they came back out looking even more deflated and said they'll return the ac units and stop bothering me for money if i didn't press charges i said they were going to clean up the mess in my house and buy new locks for my front door as well and then i wanted written apologies from both of them on top of it They begrudgingly agreed and even got a police escort back to my house. My father was forced to put the AC units back in my windows and then left my mother to clean up the huge mess they made while he went out and bought replacement locks for my front door. He was gone about an hour and came back with a new stainless steel lock set to replace the knob and deadbolts. Then he had to help my mother finish cleaning. During this time, I let the two cops just sit and watch them while drinking soda. They said it was very entertaining. After everything was cleaned up, I gave my parents each a piece of paper and a pencil and told them to write out apologies to me for what they'd done. My father looked especially angry and said I was treating him like a child. I said he was acting like one and he never stopped treating me as a child either. This was just me holding him accountable and I could have sent him to jail, but I felt like this was better for teaching him a lesson. He then kind of snorted and started writing. My mother wrote out a good apology, but my father's was pretty half-assed and passive-aggressive, but I didn't care. It seemed to kill him a little inside to have to do it. And when he was done, he left without speaking to me. My mother said she was sorry and that she'd leave me alone, then followed after him. The two cops said they thought the whole thing was hilarious and then thanked me for giving them an excuse to take a break while on the job before leaving. Not long after, I shout out to get some cameras for the exterior of my house. So if someone tries to break in again, I'll get it on video. I've only got two cameras, but I've added a couple more fake ones that look real enough just to scare people off. I haven't heard a peep from my parents, but their next door neighbor told me they actually went and bought a new AC unit guess they had the money for one after all it makes me wonder how high they were when they thought it was a good idea to steal from me maybe having lean pockets for a while will teach them can i just say if that's a pun i love it then again they are who they are after all oh my god op it sounds like your parents just absolutely terrible people what are they doing why would you steal from your own child especially ac units like go buy one they're not that expensive are they? come on get a used one like op did what these people are mental hey can i just say by the way it's very risky letting your dad buy you a new lock because he could easily have just got a little cheeky imprint of the key and he could be back to steal those ac units at any time oh i don't know Look, at least it was a good day for the police they had a good time uh but apart from that nobody really did well out of this did they what what is going on they're such strange people hey listen you've talked about vlc very low contact a lot in this story uh, how about no contacts uh you know if your parents are literally just asking you for money and then stealing from you what's the point of of you know even chatting to them at all sorry that's just my thoughts i tell you what is really funny though you knowing that you've got the power over them and just saying look i don't, I don't want you to go to prison even though what you've done is obviously very illegal and you could instead write me a little note an apology note with a pencil and paper like if anything that's more embarrassing than going to prison in the first place i would love to have seen your dad's face as he was writing that note it just would have been an absolute beaut i can imagine great story enjoyed it a lot i know she tried to stab you but anyone can google your address so you should drop the charges two nights ago i was brutally attacked in my own house by a friend i had been letting stay with me she bit a huge chunk out of my leg and tried to stab me with a pair of scissors she broke my screen door i had to run to her neighbor's house at 3 a.m to call the cops when they came to arrest her she was naked in my living room making videos and told the cops she hopes i burn to death initially i planned to approach the prosecutor on monday morning and ask that criminal charges be dropped in lieu of court-ordered mental health treatments this woman is very mentally ill and has violently lashed out at others in the past i speak from experience when i say incarceration helps no one 
I've been speaking with a friend of hers regarding this who was very heavily leaning on me to do just that His reasoning was that she didn't need a felony on her record because it would ruin her life However, a friend sent me a screenshot of a post she'd made while I was running to my neighbors Claiming I was attacking her. She listed a link to google maps of my address now. I'm a single mother My children live here. They were not home at the time of the attack though. Thankfully, I wouldn't have ran for help if they were I would have killed her I informed her friend that I would not only therefore continue with criminal charges stemming from the attack But i'd be taking the screenshot of that post to the police and requesting additional charges be levied against her if possible He then googled my address took a screenshot and said anyone can google your address She doesn't deserve to have a felony for the rest of her life I might be wrong here, but I feel like anyone that physically assaults you, tries to stab you, then lists the address where your children sleep, does indeed deserve a felony. Who the frick does this guy think he is? He dang sure doesn't know who I am if he thought that would fly. Screw him and screw her. I hope she gets the max. Now, I know I say this a lot, but that is the most mental story I've ever read on this subreddit. What on earth has just happened? She stabbed you, bit your leg, and then made some naked videos. Wow. Pretty incredible. What a trifecta. By the way, I totally agree with you. Nobody should ever get away with that. I hope she gets the max as well. I do agree with you though. Help would be probably more beneficial than going to prison. But leaking the address of your children. Yeah, it's not great, is it? What a strange, strange person. Sister was mad because I brought a camper for camping. A while back, I posted in another subreddit asking if I was in the wrong about this. And the resounding answer was heck no. And the situation has been resolved, albeit with a fair amount of friction. I am a 32-year-old man, and I wasn't a big fan of camping. I didn't like it, but didn't really hate it either. At least until now, because I own a camper. My sister loves camping much like one would love a hobby. And every time she invited me on a camping trip, something stupid would happen. My sister and her husband love to camp with friends multiple times a year. And when these people get together to camp, they get drunk and do stupid things to each other. My mother always calls me, begging I go camping with my sister and brother-in-law because they use camping mainly as a reason to get wasted and act like the way they did in college, even though they have two kids. Both are boys 10 and 9 years old. So somebody needs to stay sober and be responsible. And yes, it's been suggested that someone else watch the kids during the camping trips, but my sister and brother-in-law drag them along and call it family bonding. Anytime I went camping with my sister and her husband, they love to screw with me. They and their friends are relentless with pranks to each other. And they all considered me as fair game, even though I don't care for pranks. And even though they'd get wasted, they'd always be up by 8 or 9 a.m. And they didn't like to let me sleep in. So they'd do any stupid thing they could to bother me in order to get me up. The usual thing was to collapse my tent on me. But they also liked to make loud noises like yelling, blaring an air horn, or had a boombox on max volume put right near my head through the tent walls. They also do this kind of stuff to each other and then some. A couple of years ago, my sister and her husband got ice water dumped on them in the morning and they laughed it off. There have also been stink bombs in tents during the night, water balloons, stolen clothing, writing on faces with markers, etc. Last year, I brought one of those cots that's his own small tent and they pushed me over in it like they were cow tipping. I'd had enough. So this year I took some measures. Can I just say straight away, these people sound like the last people on earth I'd want to go camping with. I mean, look, getting drunk's fun, but getting up at 8 or 9 a.m. and doing this sort of stuff, nah, you're all right. As I'd previously said, I only went along with the camping for the sake of my nephews because they are dragged along. They're good kids. So this year I got online and found a used camper without telling anyone. Now, of course, they didn't expect to see it when I drove up to the campsite with it hooked onto the back of my F-150 4x4. My sister looked surprised, then not pleased when she saw it, but she didn't say anything about it. Everyone else seemed to love the camper though, and I gave them a tour. During the camping, all of the usual stuff happened, except anytime they tried to screw with me, I just went into my camper and locked the door, which also meant I got a better night's sleep. At around 8 a.m., I heard someone outside fiddling with the doorknob. They were trying to get inside to prank me again. They ended up resorting to using the air horn, so I put in earplugs. They then tried to rock the truck, but it must have been too heavy because they stopped after a few seconds. I didn't get up until 11 a.m. 
I made myself breakfast, got to do my business in a portable toilet, and had a decent place to change clothes. When I finally came outside, my sister was fuming. Then she made a passive aggressive remark about me finally gracing everyone with my presence. Your sister is so weird. What what is she? The rest of the time we were camping, stuff went on like this. But they couldn't mess with me when I locked myself in my box. I got good sleep for once on these trips and my nephews were always wanting to be in my camper to hang out. We played Uno at the table a few times and I had a refrigerator filled with soda. This sounds more like it. When the trip was over, my sister confronted me and said that next time she was making a tense only rule. And I said I wouldn't be going then because my camper and I are a package deal. She told me she hated the camper and that it wasn't necessary. I said she only hated it because she can't mess with me now that I've got it. I was sick of all the stupid pranks. And if they want me to help with the kids on camping trips, then my camper comes with and they stop messing with me. She called me a jackass and walked away to fume. The only other person that gave me crap about it was her husband. But everyone else said the camper was cool. My sister and brother-in-law were upset with me for days. So I showed them my original Reddit post after getting the verdict. And they freaked. Guys, I'm pretty sure that OP posted this originally on Am I the Butthole? And of course, obviously, everyone on Reddit said that no, your sister and brother-in-law though absolutely are. My sister yelled at me that I was a jerk for making the post and wanted me to take it down. I refused though and told her and my brother-in-law to read the comments They fought with me about it for a while longer and then spent some time reading the comments They ended up becoming extremely embarrassed by the opinions many people had of them And they finally agreed that if I keep camping with them to help with the kids There will be no more pranking me them and their friends are free to prank each other But I and my camper are off limits to their shenanigans Especially after I pointed out that if they cause any sort of damage, it'll be on them financially What's more when they learned it's a potential crime offense to rock my camper the way they did Because of course it could injure the person inside. They said they'd never try that again They're also not going to use the air horn anymore for obvious reasons My sister was very upset that so many people on reddit called her out as a bully Especially since I agreed with them. Me too. When I asked her why she was so dead set on messing with me, she said she really didn't know why. I told her that it didn't matter. Bullying is bullying and we're not kids anymore. My brother-in-law initially defended her, but was sucked into it as well for always going along with her antics. To which I called him a complete tool. He ended up moping about it. He and my sister were both extremely upset to have been called out as acting like a drunken frat. They were especially sore when I pointed out that we're not young anymore. My sister is 35 and her husband is 36. The arguments did start out with things like, why can't you just lighten up? And me saying, well, why can't you just respect my choice to stay out of the pranking and leave me the heck alone? And it remained a stalemate until my sister and brother-in-law went through all the comments like I told them to. Also, it seems I may have started a camper trend because at least one of the couples my sister and brother-in-law are close friends with just bought one on Facebook for themselves. They've got a GMC Sierra. That'll haul one just fine. And one of the other couples I heard are looking for a camper trailer. My sister has shown noticeable tension over this. The days of tents only camping may actually be over for the group. My sister liked to act like she was in charge of organizing the events, but all the group really did was meet up at one of several camping sites multiple times a year. Lastly, there is my mother. She was the most unhappy finding out about my original post, but I told her I really didn't care what she thought because she insisted I keep going on the camping trips despite the relentless pranking that they were doing to me because... The children! I called her out that if she was so concerned with that, she could have gone. She's retired and has plenty of time on her hands. And then she whined that she hates camping. And I sarcastically nodded and said, You see, now you get how I felt. She hasn't apologized, but did admit I was right. Though she's acting distant with me and my sister now. So, I'm still gonna be doing camping. Because what's the point of having a camper if I don't use it? But it's more for myself now. I can go camping by myself on my own time now. And if I go with my sister and brother-in-law again, they aren't allowed to screw with me. So I think I can finally enjoy being out in the woods for a few days at a time now. I'm gonna be looking into getting solar panels and setting up a gaming console as well. I'm still a fan of older consoles like the PS2, N64, and the GameCube, 
So having at least one of those in the camper, along with a collection of some good books to read in peace, sounds like a great way to unwind. Now, can we please, just for a second, talk about your sister? Because she is... Uh, now, that has to be bleeped. It really does, because it's not a nice word. But she is. Like, what is she doing? None of those pranks are funny. Go back to bed, you clown. It's like 8 a.m. You've been, like, smashing the beers the night before. What are you doing? Nobody wants to be awake at that time. Least of all me. And least of all OP. Like, what are you... How, why is that funny? Look, okay, the stuff that you did the night before, right? Having some beers with the fellas. Camping. That sounds all right. Like, I don't like camping that much, but that sounds fun. Going and doing it with your mates and, and getting drunk and, you know, chilling out, having a good time. That is fun. Getting up in the early hours of the morning, probably extremely hungover, playing pranks on your friends. I mean, pranks. I mean, come on. Blowing an air horn. Are you two years old? Like, seriously. Uh, that's not funny. Go back to bed. Like, what are you doing? It's just so weird. Any of you play cool pranks like this? If you do, you're a f loser okay sorry to say it but it's true let's move on vindictive ex-wife illegally signed application to local hoa in my name i'll start this off by saying that my ex is vindictive as hell we've been fully divorced since about right before the pandemic started we sold the house we shared and i didn't have to pay her alimony because she cheated and we're in an at-fault state it was messy since d-day literally all of the stereotypes First the sobbing and then trickle truths saying, I love you. It was just one time. Okay, it was two years. And then the gaslighting followed by, I'm going to take you for everything before packing her stuff and walking out. I feel like I never really knew the woman my ex was in all the time we were together. We were married for five years and together for seven. And in two of those five marriage years, she had affairs with three other men. The final one being a foreign businessman of some sort from what I could find out. Yes, I got tested for STDs and was thankfully negative. Yes, she got pregnant by the final AP. And no, I didn't sign the birth certificate because I found out about all the affairs before the baby was born thanks to a call from the first AP. My ex tried to go full scorched earth on me. But since we live in and were married in an at-fault state, she lost. Now, we didn't pay equally into our house and the equity was divided 70-30. So I got a pretty good cash payout when I sold our marital home to put as a down payment on a different house closer to my job. It's a bit of a downgrade, but it suits a single guy in his 30s like me just fine. My ex did show up to my house once, but I refused to let her in. She complained to me that I'd financially ruined her in the divorce. I said that she was fully willing to do that to me first and that she had the audacity to say it should have been me that had my life screwed over and not hers. I laughed so hard and said it was karma. She yelled that she'd sue me for what was rightfully hers. I said that if she was going to sue me, then go ahead, sue me. It would end up the same way in court because she's got nothing but a false sob story. She was a cheater, not me. Look, I'm no angel, but I didn't do anything to her. And she was the one who ruined our marriage. She then said that she'd tell everyone she could that I abused her. I said I'd sue her for defamation if she did, and that I was recording our interaction and had those words saved to my phone. She went wide-eyed and her jaw dropped. The look people are calling the surprise Pikachu face. Then I asked why she was there, if not to just try and make trouble. Did she not have a new man in her life that knocked her up? She just huffed at me and said he isn't around much. And she's stuck in a tiny apartment, living off his child support till he comes back. It was immature of me, I know, but I did the bit of playing the world's smallest violin. She yelled at me to go and screw myself. And I yelled back that I'd sooner do that than her any time. She raged at me and then got in her car to leave. And I haven't seen her since. There is a homeowners association in my neighborhood, but I was not legally obligated to join it because the last owner of my house was not a member. I made sure of that through a real estate lawyer as well. The HOA had no grounds to force me to join and they were not happy about it. The HOA president would show up with forms every week for the first month demanding I sign them. Then she threatened to take me to court to which I had to get a C and D sent to her from my lawyer to make a stop. So then instead she started harassing me by looking for any infractions she possibly could to report to the city. An inspector came out several times and found nothing wrong. In fact, I offered one of them a burger while grilling and they graciously accepted. Did I mention that HOA hates barbecues and parties that aren't approved in advance? Well, they do. And I like to grill when the weather's good. 
and my neighbors actually love me for it because I invite them over. I had the police called on me several times for noise complaints because I was playing music on a Saturday afternoon while having my friends over. I actually caught the HOA president trespassing once when she was trying to peer into my windows. I called the police, but she denied ever doing it. So I got cameras, and of course she hasn't trespassed since. But I still got repeated passive aggressive letters saying my cameras were not an approved addition to my house. Some months ago, I started getting letters for fines in the mail. And when I contacted the HOA, their representative claimed they had it on record that I joined and then needed to pay all fees effective immediately. I told them that was not possible. Then they emailed a scanned copy of the forms and they had a signature on them but it wasn't mine. It was very similar in some ways, and I recognized right away as it being my ex's handwriting. She, of course, knew what my signature looked like, but it was a loose imitation at best. I got in touch with a lawyer right away over the forged signature, but the HOA still demanded to go to court, and it took seven months before that happened. Meanwhile, they were stacking unpaid fines against me weekly and were threatening to put a lien on my house. We went to court and the HOA president looked very smug. But my lawyer pointed out how the signature wasn't the same as mine and was very inconsistent in the various forms. I'd never allowed the HOA president in my house and I'd never request the forms. The idiot HOA president actually slammed her palm on the table and said it was still binding. But when pressed where the fraudulent signature came from, she admitted my ex-wife called the HOA and they sent her the forms, then got them back in the mail signed. But then she actually claimed she thought I'd signed them. The judge looked at her and asked if she was serious. She confirmed she was. The judge then asked how a woman I was no longer married to that had never even lived with me in my current residence was supposed to have any bearing or whether or not I joined her HOA. She went quiet and I could see the, oh snap, look on her face as the hamster wheels were turning and she seemed to finally mentally put the pieces together. I'm sorry, the fact that it took the judge to say that for her to realize just shows how dumb this lady is. My lawyer then counterclaimed that what the HO did was blatant fraud and legal actions must be taken. And they were. I countersued the HOA for the emotional distress of the harassment I'd gotten since moving in, which of course I had lots of proof of. That won me about 10 grand after lawyer fees that I decided to put towards my mortgage. The HOA president was removed from her throne. I like to think she was kicking and screaming. She was also slapped with a hefty fine. I've seen her outside a few times and she always looks at me like I am the devil. The HOA itself had to pay all of my legal fees too. And finally, I wanted to go after my ex for forging my signature, but I can't because not long after she forged my signature on those forms, she apparently left the country to be with her third AP. She's somewhere in Europe from what I can see of the final post on her Facebook before she disappeared. So I can't do anything against her until she returns to the US. So that was a wash. I'm not getting letters from the HOA anymore though. And the new president has promised to keep things completely cordial from now on. I still don't feel like I got much of a win in this though. Other than the 10K payouts, it all felt like a huge waste of time. Yeah, I kind of get your point, OP. Look, 10K is great, but was it worth it? Like all this stuff, all this duress, all the stress, something else that rhymes with stress. Like it's just, it's a lot, isn't it? All this rubbish to go through and you get a little, a little bit of money at the end. Like, look, don't get me wrong. I'd enjoy a little cheeky 10K on the side, but it's a lot of work, isn't it? All the anxiety, the, the dealing with people like this. Like HOAs, talk to me in the comments down below if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, what, what are they? Like, they don't really exist in England, I don't think. And all the stories I've ever read on the internet, on Reddit, that involve HOAs, always show them to be just terrible and just paint them in a terribly negative light. So let me know, what purpose do they serve? Are they all as weird and bad as the one that we just looked at? And yeah, what are they? I'd love to know. And by love, I mean, I'd hate to know, but I'm actually quite interested. Please do tell me. So there we go. That is it. That is the end of our slash entitled parents, the movie summer edition. I've chucked some other movies up on screen. If you aren't satisfied after over two hours of entitled parent stories, fair play. If you want more, I rate you. But wow, that's a lot of stories. Do drop a like on it if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you're new and I will see you all tomorrow with a brand new episode.